Hello, High Street men. We're about to restart our study of the book of Luke, but before we do so, we want to reintroduce ourselves to the book. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit about the author of the book of Luke. I'm going to talk about the distinctives of the book, that is what makes it different than other New Testament books. I'm going to talk about the outline of the book, and then finally the purpose of the book as it's articulated by the author in the first few verses. So first of all, the author. We believe because of ancient traditions that a New Testament figure named Luke wrote the book of Luke. We know a little bit about Luke from Paul's letters. In the book of Colossians, Paul refers to Luke as the beloved physician. I love that. He was a well-liked doctor. In addition to that, in the book of Philemon, Paul refers to Luke as a co-laborer. That is, Luke was not only a well-liked doctor, he was also someone who was in the ministry of Christ with Paul, working with Paul. And then finally, and perhaps most poignantly, in the book of 2 Timothy, uh, when Paul is writing the, the book of 2 Timothy, he is, towards the end of his ministry, he's having difficulties, he feels lonely, he feels abandoned, but there's one person who's stuck with Paul, and that is Luke. So we just have these fragments about Luke, but we understand from those fragments that he was important in the early church, that he was a good guy, a beloved physician, a co-laborer, and someone who stuck with Paul even in difficult times. And we understand from ancient traditions, then, that he is the person who probably wrote the book of Luke, and so that's why we call it the book of Luke. The author of the book of Luke also wrote the book of Acts, we believe, and so because of that, actually, Luke wrote more words of Greek in the New Testament than any other author, even Paul, because he wrote Luke and Acts. <clears throat> so that's a little bit about Luke. Now let's talk a little bit about the distinctives of the book, the things that make the book of Luke uh, different than other books in the New Testament, and in particular different from other gospel accounts, that is, other accounts of Jesus's life and ministry. First of all, the book of Luke is written from a meticulous historian's perspective. Now, we believe that the other gospels also are meticulous history, but they're really written kind of from an insider's perspective, it seems. The book of Luke was written by someone who probably was not a follower of Jesus during Jesus's earthly ministry, but someone who went and investigated that ministry and investigated the written sources and talked to people so that he could put together an historical account of Jesus's life. Next, this is a gospel that shows Jesus as the son of man. The Gospel of Matthew represents Jesus as the coming King of the Jews, the Messiah. The book of Mark shows Jesus as a servant. The book of John shows Jesus as the Son of God. The book of Luke shows Jesus as the Son of Man. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, we believe, of course, that Jesus was the Son of God, that he was divine, that he was the second person of the Holy Trinity. We also believe that he was a Son of Man. We believe that he was a human, fully human. And because of that, he could relate to people. And we see in the book of Luke not only the reiteration of the phrase, Son of Man, we see Jesus relating to the lowly, the marginalized, the second-class citizens, people that were hated. We see him relating distinctly also in the book of Luke with women who were second-class citizens at that time in ancient Palestine. And so we see him relating with these people and serving these people that others would not necessarily serve or would think were, were second-class or would even hate. And so we see him as a son of man, as a man who is serving other people, who is so serving lowly people, even though he is also the son of God. In the book of Luke, prayer is emphasized. Prayer is emphasized. So we see a few prayers of Jesus that are recorded in the book of Luke. We also see a few parables about prayer in the book of Luke that are not in the other gospels. And finally, the linguistics of the book make it fairly distinctive. It is a book that is very rich in wording, that's written in very, uh, very proper and polished Greek. And so it was written clearly by someone who was very educated, so a meticulous historian and a meticulous author. Now, the basic outline of the book of Luke is this. It starts with the story of Jesus's birth, the nativity story and his early life. It goes from there to the start of his ministry, which is mainly in Galilee. From there, we see the journey towards Jerusalem, his final days in Jerusalem and his crucifixion, and then finally his resurrection and ascension, the basic outline of the book. The purpose of the book is articulated by Luke, by the author, in the first few verses I said a moment ago. So I want to read those verses to you. Many people have set out to write accounts about the events that have been fulfilled among us. They use the eyewitness reports circulating among us from the early disciples. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also decided to write an accurate account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. 
So here in these verses, we see that this book has a specific addressee, a man named Theophilus, but we also believe very strongly that Luke would have expected this book to go out to other Christians and be read to other Christians. And so we see the purpose here directed specifically towards Theophilus here, but the purpose in general of the book that can apply to any reader or hearer of the book is this, being certain of the truth of the Christian teachings. That's it. That's, that's the purpose of the book. And so Luke is saying, you know, I'm someone who's coming here and investigating these things and looking at them and putting together an orderly account so that Christians can believe these doctrines of the Christian faith. One other thing that we want to keep in mind here as we move forward in this study is this. The ancient Israelite people were expecting a Messiah that was different than the Messiah that they got, largely. They were expecting a political Messiah. So they were expecting someone who would hold political rallies and someone who would go and eventually arrive in Jerusalem and be put up on a pedestal and throw off the yoke of Rome and initiate and inaugurate a new period of peace and prosperity and liberty from Rome in Israel. That's not really what they got, is it? Or is it? You see, they didn't get liberation from Rome with Jesus. They got liberation from the powers of darkness and the powers of death through Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And so while the Messiah that was expected wasn't the Messiah that ended up showing up, the Messiah that showed up was much better than what was expected. And it's an amazing story. His life, his death, his resurrection. That's the story that we're going to continue looking at here in our study of the book of Luke. Take care.